tonight I'm going to take a sculpted wheel and try and turn it into a mesh. And the reason for it is we're going to try and get a better UV map on it so we can make it look more realistic. Uh, we're going to use a blender, Rokuro, some other tools in order to try and make the, a, a nice looking train wheel. And anyway, I'll try and figure it out as we go. So uh, Laura uh, Seabrook had come up with a very nice sculpted wheel and train set for OpenSim. It looks somewhat like this. This is Rokuro 4. Uh, it's free download. Just type in Rokuro uh, Sculpty Tool and you can download it for free. What you do is you drag these little arrows around and put them into the proper position. Uh, the first thing you need to be aware of when you're messing with the sculpt is that sculpts are very rounded. They're smooth shaded, meaning the system's going to kind of draw a spline through it which is a curvy surface and calculate the normals for each of the various surfaces from that. So when you have sharp edges, like as you can see, there's lots of sharp edges like right down here. In order to get that sharp edge, you have to use three data points like this. If you just have one data point at that spot, it's just going to draw a curve through it like a like drawing a, a line around an orange. Um, so you got to use up to three dots like this. Put them up really close together to get a really sharp edge on this surface here. So we want a flat spot here and a flat spot here. Here I've got three of them again, some triples over here as well. Um, when you've done that, um, I've also loaded a background here that I swiped from Laura to get the outline of this wheel. And I mirrored it and flipped it so it would fit in this. I've also changed the aspect ratio a little bit down here to a half to make it look like an actual wheel. So I think I've managed to duplicate what Laura has done in Rokuro. And what we're going to do now is we're going to save that as an OBJ file. And then we're going to bring that into Blender. So we don't need this anymore. We can, uh, let's see here, that should work. All we need. Uh, we're now going to need to um, take a look at this in Blender. But before I do that, I've got some wheels to look at real quick. A wheel in mesh can have this kind of detail. It can be done in geometry or a texture. We can uh, make wheels have look shiny and new like this. Or we can make them old and rusty like this. And this is virtually impossible to do with a sculpted shape because a sculpt is going to be more like a uh, Oh, a Mercator map of the United of the world, where the North Pole is stretched all the way across the top, the South Pole is stretched across the bottom, and it's just very difficult to try and make anything out of a wheel that has this sort of detail in it. But with mesh, we'll be able to do that, hopefully. So what we need to do is bring this into Blender, this particular um, wheel shape that we've got. So we're just gonna start that up. There's a couple of things you need to know when you're working with Blender for the first time user. OpenSim is a little different from Blender. There's just one or two settings you might want to consider changing right off the bat. We won't need the cube. I won't necessarily need this camera. I'm just going to hide it with the letter H. And I'm going to pause here for a second and bring up another tool which will let you see my keyboard. It's going to be here in uh, QI Press Button Click Shower. It's a very nice program. It'll let you see my keystrokes here in a minute. Okay, so we have our basic system. We have a light up here, a lamp. Um, we're going to be using the N key and open up this panel on the right come down here we're going to want to switch this thing to where it has back face culling turned on because OpenSim can only see one side blender defaults to two this will help us if we made any mistakes I'm also going to switch it to GLSL mode because we're going to be working with the materials tab it's all we're going to need there uh, I'm going to clear the left hand side with the letter T and then we're going to import our wheel into the middle of this field here so file import we want OBJ. So here is our nice little sculpted wheel. As you can see it um, 
has this um, sharp lines on it everywhere. We want to suppress that. So the way to do that is over here in the T menu. We will right click, go into the edit mode. We're going to select the third button down. We're going to do a smooth faces. So it now looks like this. Then I'm going to take some of that away. We're going to just click this little spot here. We want to be in this vertex mode rather than the line or the face mode. I'm going to click that and press the control and the numeric keypad plus key to highlight that. Then we're going to make that flat shaded. And similar to this side right here, we're going to make it flat shaded. And it gives us this much flatter axle that we would like to see. We can do more of this this way, like these edges here that run around this surface on the outside as well. So bear with me here a minute. We're going to make this wheel have a sharper outer edge. I'm just going to press in the whole shift key down, right click. There's no easy way to do this other than this. And then shade that flat. And it's looking more like a wheel. Now this you cannot do with a sculpt. Sculpts are always going to be that uh, smooth shaded. Might as well do the inside while we're at it. This will take a little longer. Most of Blender and UV unwrapping, which is what we're going to do here in a minute, is all about selection and using the different tools. There's a lot of different techniques. A wheel lends itself to several of them. One of them would be to look at it from the front. That's by pressing the numeric keypad 1 or using the numeric keypad 5 to bring it into this mode. And then Control 1 We'll flip it to the other side. We can look at each side like this. So we put it dead square on like this and unwrap this face. We can flip it to the other side, unwrap that face. And then all we have to worry about, here's I push the 8 key to rotate it, is this strip around it. And selecting that strip is going to be really easy. We just select the front and the back and then inverse select the strip. So we're going to go through that step next. This will be the first type of UV unwrap that we're going to do. So let's just run through it this way. We're going to click the beginning right here. Uh, A. Click that segment. Uh, we want dot mode right there. Now we're going to use the plus key, control plus on the numeric keypad until we select most of the outer wheel. Like that. Then we press 1 to look at it from the side and do a UV project from view. That's now going to look when we go to here in our UV wrap window, it's going to look like this. We can see our circle is perfectly round. Now we can bring in a uh, image. We're going to open this image. Let's see here. Open, open. There we go. And we're going to pick one of these wheels. Well, let's go with this uh, nice shiny new one here. And you can see it lines up pretty well. We can hover over here and do an S and scale it down a little bit. We can do G to grab it, move it back and forth. And you're going to find that with wheels, you really want to get the center in the middle like that. And then the edge is going to overhang a little bit too. So what we're going to want to have to do on that would be to move these edges in and kind of squish them inward. That's actually pretty easy. What we do is we're going to use the G key to grab these, like I'm grabbing the whole thing. Instead, we're going to but instead of using it like that, we're going to go into ortho mode. We hover on this screen, do an O, and this right here shows you the shape into a proportional edit mode. So we can do an inverse square or root shape or a spherical shape to tug those sides in. This smooth works pretty well, so we're going to select that. This is what the O key turns on here. It enables this editing mode. So we're just going to come over here and right click that one spot and do a G and a circle will appear. So you may have to scroll way back and do the G to see it. And then by scrolling wheel in, you can move that wheel in. And we'll do it again. Now you can see how it moves that whole wheel in and scrunches it. 
So if we just play with this diameter a little bit till we get it to fit in without distorting the wheel too much. And that's the way we re unwrap the wheel. That side's done. We can do the other side now pretty much the same way. Say we want to go back to the dot mode. Select the dot, control plus a bunch of times. And control one this time. UV project from view. Again, you can see this. And let's just map it to the same wheel with clicking that. Oops, not the wheel. There we go. And um, you can see again, it's not going to be quite right in the middle. We'll move this over. We're still in the O proportional editing mode. We'll just grab this and push it over. So this is method one manually unwrapping. Now we'd like to see this, what it looks like. Uh, one way to do that is to go back to the end window and change it to texture mode. Then click this button here so we can see that texture. We'll need to add a lamp, shift A. A good lamp is a hemispherical lamp. Maybe a sun. Brighten the whole thing up a bit. And we have a train wheel. And because we want to probably narrow this up, I'm going to right click, scale that in, uh, let's see, scale that in Y, S, Y. And we've got a nice little ring train wheel here. Hide these lamps with H. We just got to do this strip down the center here. And probably the easiest way to do that, because it's very unlikely people see it, we could add a strip of steel to the outside edge of this or we can just probably just do a straight unwrap. Now one of the tricks you might want to do, you might want to play with these different ways. I'm going to show you a nice handy thing that I learned from using the Avastar. These vertexes can have groups. So I'm going to add a vertex group here in the vertex panel. That's this little triangle thing. I'm going to call this group the back and this one the front. So we click the back, the back is assigned, we click assign. That sort of records all these into that. Then this other side, we're going to go grab all the ones that are mapped to the front, and we're going to assign those to the front. Okay, now we can easily select the front or the back by just clicking here and hitting select. We can click and add the front, so the front and the back. Now we can come down and do a select inverse, which is control I, and that selects all the other vertexes. I actually selected maybe a little too much the last time. So I'm going to use this, the, uh, the C key. And let's go to face mode here. Let's add these faces in right here. Oh, wait a minute. We need another one here. We need a third. We're going to call this one the rim. Let's go back and select the back, the front, select the inverse. There we go. We do have the whole thing. And we're going to assign that to the rim. And we can just unwrap that, take a look at what's going to happen. Just a straight unwrap this time. and it's a nice round looking thing. We'll throw a wheel on it here. Well, part of the problem is that you see it's really big in scale. We might want to take that wheel and turn it into a very narrow strip. And there are several different ways of doing that. We want to turn it into an arc and relay it on top of this. I want to just add a piece of silver somewhere or just map it down to almost nothing. Um, also, our lighting is rather poor still. I'm going to show you the lighting and how materials work in Blender. We're going to go over here to the GLSL mode. We're going to come back over here to the Properties window to the Material tab. Now, we can have up to eight materials on this texture here on the left. 
Um, we're probably just going to use one. We could use a strip of steel for this and the other. That's not, probably not a bad idea. So let's go to our vertexes and let's select our back and our front. Select the back. Select the front, not the rim. We're going to make these one texture. So we, now we come over here and we have um, we're going to call this, it says Aki. It's going to be the wheel. And we're going to assign that there. Let's go ahead and select the inverse. Add a second material. Uh, new, and we're going to call that the rim. Assign it. So we're going to select the wheel, go to the image tab, let's close that out, and open a new wheel. This one right here is what we're working with. And you see how it's mapped it to the front and the back automatically. We can now come over here to the rim, select it, go to here, the image, open. And we're going to need a metal. So I'm going to go to my database of metals, B, C, D, E, let's see here, database, B, C, D, F, G, I don't know. I have a lot of textures. Now we're going to pick some kind of rusty looking, shiniest looking steel. Oh, don't see anything particularly attractive here. Oh, cast steel. Because now we're in the GL mode, open GLSL mode, we get a better looking set of lights now for our train wheel. Remember, this is just the same number of vertexes as a sculpt, but some of the differences are we have a very sharp, because of the trick, we have a very sharp front here, very sharp back here. Uh, it's a little shiny, so we might want to take and bring the specular intensity down a little bit. But this is a decent looking wheel. It's relatively high poly. If I edit this, uh, it's a 10,024 faces. It'll be about 2,048 triangles by the time it's all said and done. That's kind of intense for a wheel. It's a good looking wheel. You can probably reduce that by about half with the reduce modifier. We'll do this the last step. Now to this we could add things like bump maps so we can bring these bolts out or we can just edit those bolts and add bolts on top of it. That's rather easy to do. Um, as an example we can add a mesh uh, UV sphere and shape it. We can add uh, various curves and surfaces. But more interestingly is if you come up here and you do a file, um, let's see here, user preferences, then we go over to the add-ons and we do, oh, let's see here, extra add mesh extra objects and we check this box right here and then save that now when we add we should see some more stuff we can play with we've got extras like diamonds and stars and honeycombs and a classic teapot we've got gears and pipe joints and stuff like that a single vertex is kind of nice um, so you can build up and put gears on your train, you know, pipe joints, math functions. Actually, what we're going to do is we're just going to use a, a circle. We're going to, that circle appears there. We're going to rotate it in the X 90 degrees. We're going to shrink that way down. Oops, before I do this, let me try that again. Delete that. Right click. Delete. We're going to add that circle in the T menu at the bottom we're going to make it have six sides six sides there we go rotate x90 drag it on over bring it forward we're going to make a decent looking little nut here in a minute there we go now We're going to push that in, about like that, and do a extrude in the X. 
Oh, I need a face first. Extrude that in the X like so. Before we copy that, let's unwrap it. So this is a sample where we might get a different unwrap. We're going to select that piece. Let's go to our UV window so we can see what's going to happen. And we're just going to do a UV unwrap. And it's going to put this big old square triangle, all this stuff. And we could probably get by with just shrinking this down and tucking it away somewhere like this to make our bolt. It's not particularly interesting when we do that. Um, scale it down some more and shove it into here. As you can see, it's really just not that pretty. So we can do a smart UV GB project. That will unwrap each individual face down and we stuck them in different places. Oh, we haven't added our material is the problem. Properties. We want to um, go to this material and just pick one we've already created the wheel there we go and so we now we can play with each of these individual surfaces and decide the color of them individually you can pick them by clicking a vertex and doing a control L and then just drag that wherever you want anything that's connected like this will move oh we still have O mode on so turn O off, do a G, and then we can just go grab each one with Control L and place them accordingly. Not sure which one. Okay, that's the front and the back face. These pieces right up in here, we can just do a B and draw a box around them. Drag them somewhere over here. And we have a nice looking, probably looking nice looking nut and bolt. Those probably ought to be shrunk way down and just darkened up a lot, tossed in the middle. And now we can duplicate that with Shift D. Again, this is something you just can't do with the sculpt because the sculpt's going to bring everything like the North Pole of the Earth right here. And you've got an awful lot of vertexes that are crammed into a small space. That's not very useful. Now these pieces here, we're going to want to have them shaded flat. We might want to take the top and make it smooth. Yeah, there we go. See, now we have fairly sharp looking edges, but we've also got a rounded sort of looking top. And this makes a much better looking, as this is rolling down the track, you'll see this spinning along as it goes. We've got a fairly nice wheel. So that's exercise one. We're going to save that as, uh, oh, let's see here, wheels. Uh, wheel. Hmm. 3D models. Wheel. Wheel one. Now, I'm show you another technique for unwrapping on this wheel. It's a, we're going to let the machine do all the work. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go into this line select mode. And what we're going to do is I'm going to turn it white so we can see it. So instead of a material or a texture, we're going to go to a solid white. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to click on one of these lines right here and then do a select edge loop. It should highlight it all the way around in orange. And then we do a control E and we're going to mark that as a seam. You can clear the seam if you make a mistake. We're going to do it again on this wheel. Select edge loop. We can see the orange loop running all the way around. Control E, mark seam. We're going to want to cut this direction too. What we're doing is cutting it like a knife. No, that's not right. That one, that one. If you miss one, you'll find out quickly enough because it won't unwrap right. There we go. Control E, mark seam. We can do further cuts if we want. 
this should be adequate for this wheel. Now we just do a UV unwrap and it's unwrapped our wheels here, here, and here. I'm not quite sure what happened right here. There's a whole bunch of them there. All right, what we want to do is probably select the site again and do a UV unwrap. Well, wants to pick that up over there. Let's find out what that vertex is. Down here is an interesting little box I use a lot. We click it and it lets us, when we click in this window, see what we've clicked there. It's this little pole down here. There's a block of them at this pole that's causing us fits. So I suspect that's due to these vertexes. Uh, I think there was an extra vertex in there. I have to remove the doubles. So what is all this? Why is all this down here? Hmm. Scale that zero. Doesn't help. There we go. I'll just turn that into one face with F. That's probably a good idea to do that too over here. F. Come on, F. You can't create a merged face. That. Uh, it's got an extra vertex or two running through it there. So this doesn't do a very good job of making the mesh. So I'm going to delete it. See, it's got an inner piece right there. We're going to select the edge loop and rebuild that face real quick. Let's go to the line mode. Select this. Select the edge loops. So that's a bit of a surprise. Type F. We've rebuilt our face now. And we can do a UV unwrap. And now it's unwrapped our wheel fairly nicely. We didn't cut all the way through though here. So I've got to trace down that cut and complete it. Hmm, that looks correct. Uh, there's a uh, piece. Yeah, I can see that. It looks correct to me. I'm not quite sure what's happening. Hmm, right in here. These are supposed to be cut, marked as a seam. There we go. I got them. So there was a little bit of problem in the Rokuro geometry where it put extra faces in here. We fixed that. And then I went in and um, rebuilt it by selecting an edge. Here we've got, if you look at it closely now, you can see it's going to make a knife cut all the way around here, all the way across, and all the way around here. And then when the unwrap occurs, it does this. So we're just going to do a Control L here. Oops, we can't do that while we've got this button down. Uh, select them all. Do a Control L. Push this out of the way. And we can go stack these back up again on top of our wheel. S to scale it up. Just going to go ahead and scale the whole thing. Put that back in the middle and scale it up. And we've got to fix our little bit of distortion. The wheel's not perfectly round. So we come over here, hover, do an O, or we can just enable it here either way. Then grab this, right click, G, and bring it in a little bit. This is really handy to 
to sculpt with. And let's turn our picture on. And there is our wheel inside and outside. And we've got to do the rim still. Now this kind of rim is laid out flat. So we could edit the texture and put a silver strip across the top and then make a really smooth nice one. This is another advantage to uh, doing this. We can do something like draw a box here and select all of these. And then what we're going to do is we're going to scale them in the x-axis to a zero. Oops, not the x, the y. Scale y zero. Now I've got to turn O off. Scale y zero. That gives us a nice straight line here. And then what I'm going to do is pin it. You go to the UVs and you can pin them and it'll put a dot on it and they won't move. We're going to do the same thing down here. We're going to do all of this. Control L. Pin them with P. And now if I just UV this or E over here, it'll line them up nice and straight. So now we can go and edit this image if we want. And we can go put a silver strip up here something seamless and make this nice and silvery like put streaks and scratches and stuff all the way across it with a say a piece of aluminum or metal or other steel we just grow that and then image reload and reposition everything and we'll have a really really nice looking center wheel right now it's just running across the middle and it's going to have some distortion here as I rotate it because this is in essence the same thing as sticking it right across the middle here and when I do that, you're probably going to see some artifacts, darkness. That's actually not too bad. We could play with our lighting a little bit. Let's get rid of the sun. Let's take this lamp, delete it too, and go to the properties window. Turn our Hemi down a little bit and add ourselves some form of a spotlight. Like a point and then we can drag that around and you can see how this thing's going to look with the light shining on it uh, there's a lot of uh, technique, oh, we don't have this unwrapped forgot that we added this new surface here so we'll go back to our UV, see it's that little piece right there So I'm just going to turn it face on again, do a UV project from view, shrink that over here, do an A, and shrink it down again. There we go. That means we got to reposition some stuff slightly or just move this where it belongs. R to rotate it, G to grab it, S to scale it. enough. Let's just grab these. Take the other side. Okay. Some other things we can do with mesh is we can drill a hole through this thing. Um, so it actually looks more like a wheel. Uh, we could reshape this a little bit if we want because this is actually supposed to be a bearing surface. So like this piece right here really is probably um, that probably should be scaled down a little bit like this because there's going to be a thing that comes down and clamps on that. I should have that. have a picture of what that would look like in here in the wheel holder. Yeah, here we go. This is a uh, bearing that's clamped around the wheel. And so this really is just a ball bearing arrangement stuck in here held in with bolts. And so when we look at our blender model here, that's going to be grabbing this piece right here. If you're building it like a real train, I would think. Anyway, that's how you make a train wheel that's two different types of UV wraps. There's plenty more UV wraps. For example, in Substance Painter, you have the ability to just spray rust on something. If I was going to be using Substance Painter here, I would probably go in and just do a simple um, this UV wrap here, the Smart UV, be 
ramp. Uh, but I use a lot of this project from bounds. Um, I do a lot of marketing with the, uh, the, the mark seam. I use this uh, UV ramp to select things a lot. This wheel's pretty simple. It's hard to go wrong with the wheel. That's another way to make it. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as wheel number two. So if anybody wants to download it and play with it, see if they can reproduce it, you're welcome to try. Anyway, that's um, how you turn a uh, sculpt into a solid mesh piece.